Okay, it is officially live. Uh, all right, welcome everyone. Hang on just a moment. Um, I'm on my slow computer today, so uh, things are going to be a little wonky as I finish sharing links and stuff. So just hang on a moment, and we'll get started. Um, this one, this one, Twitter's, and okay. All right, ready? OK, hi, everyone. Welcome to this week's Learning Space. My name is Nicole Gallucci. I am a postdoc with CosmoQuest. Uh, this is our weekly show about all things. Oh, hang on. I'm getting. Hello? Sorry, I'm getting sound from another feed. That was my mistake. OK. <laughs> let's, let's try this again. Uh, so I am uh, joined by Hannah Khan. So welcome, Henna. Hi, everyone. Hi. Uh, Fraser Kane ha um, email introduced us um, because you are doing some really, really awesome astronomy outreach work uh, in India that we're going to be talking about. Um, so this is our weekly show about all things science, education, and outreach, and astronomy, and fun and stuff. Right. Um, Google has just uh, made an yet another change to ha the way Hangouts is done, and so there are two event pages for this right now. I can't promise I will keep up with the comments on both event pages and YouTube, but I will try. So if you are watching, please feel free to share the link. Please do comment on YouTube or on the two event pages I managed to create somehow. Uh, um, but probably best way to reach us is to use the Q&A app. Uh, the the Q&A question and answer app on Hangouts is open on my window at all times, so it's probably the best way to get a question or a comment to us, so please do uh, say hello. I know it's uh, kind of late for our European friends. You guys are probably in bed and, and not joining us this week. Uh, but if you're watching, say hello, ask us questions, and uh, we'll get on with the show. So, Henna, thank you for being here. Um, it is 7.30 in the morning for you? It's, it is. It is. It's a, it's a <laughs> lovely day, actually. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's like lovely and sunny, and it's it's eight o'clock at night here, so we managed to get time zones worked out just so, so we could I have know. a show. Um, so so yeah, Fraser um got us in contact because you do a project called Universe Simplified. So what yeah. is Universe Simplified? What is this project that you're doing? Um, so what I started doing a few months back is I am taking astronomy and science hands-on based activities. Uh, these workshops to the schools over here uh, because I mean I, I'm not sure how much astronomy is taught in the US in schools as part of the school curriculum but over here the only astronomy which is taught is we have a little bit about the solar system in uh, maybe the sixth or the seventh grade and that's it uh, there's no um, you know education on how black holes are formed or anything about how the solar system was formed so um, I thought that since there is this gap, why not start taking astronomy workshops? And um, somewhere down the line, the idea developed to make it science workshops as well, because um, education is um, it, it's quite focused on exams and uh, memorizing things. But I thought if we could have um, you know something where the children are learning by doing some activity, so if they have to um, understand clean technology, you just make a windmill or uh, a toy made from solar panels or uh, anything. So we have like, of course, I mean, water rockets are a common thing which, which, are, which is used for education and so much fun. So, yes. um, so, so I, I started doing that and I started it this July. So I'm yet to set a lot of workshops, but right now there are about three, four workshops which are set. And I have to admit it's so much fun. Uh, taking these workshops to these schools, so it's it's great. So I am sharing the link uh, if you to any of the comment threads. If you guys are watching, if you go to facebook.com/slash/universe-simplified-india, that'll take you to the Facebook page uh, describing this this project. What um, what age school children do you reach out to at these workshops? Um, so I've taught children uh, from the second grade till the tenth. Okay. And wow. Yes, but I, I I hope to set more workshops for the primary section um, and hopefully at some point start going to colleges as well because, um, I mean, even the engineering schools over here, it's it's still a lot textbook-based, you know, mm -hmm. it's, it's not really, I mean, I, I, I think um, 
in the US, Canada, and all these countries, it, education is hands on. But here, that culture still needs to come about. It's, it's still textbook oriented. And um, so I, I hope so if, you know, if children can just work on science projects or um, they, can, they can learn even engineering through that. But, but that's like later on. Right now, uh, my focus group is just um, just like first to 10th standard, 10th grade. Right, right. Yeah, I, honestly, I mean, at, at that level, a lot of the U.S. education is also still from a textbook, and it's very much teaching to, to test. And uh, there there are movements to try and change that in the U.S. Um, through, through different standards. Um, but we're playing catch up there as well. Um, so what, what different um, topics, what different topics do you cover in your workshops? So um, we have one which is rocket, water rocket. So I, I do talk to them about rocket and a little bit of rocket design and stuff, and I show them NASA launches. And then we make the rocket. I, I have so all the workshops. I have children form groups of four, mm -hmm. and um, then they so if so four children will make one water rocket. So I take all the material with me, and they make the rocket. And the next day we go and we launch it. So then you know they understand physics, Newton's third law, and stuff like that. So that's one. Uh, the other one is astronomy, which uh, I mean, I you know we discuss about black holes, how the solar system was formed, about Europa, and all these exciting things. And uh, then I have them draw everything with craft items and chart paper and you know crayons and stuff, so they understand. At least the younger children like they they enjoy it and they understand that you cannot have other stars in our solar system and things like that. Uh, that is the other one. Then um, there's a workshop on eclipses. Mm -hmm. where, um, I take torches. Moon, Earth, and everything, and again, the form groups of four. So, um, what I what I also try and do is um, try and get them form groups, and then reason out the answers by looking at the models instead of me telling them. I mean, you know, write on like what how how the solar eclipses happen, or how moon phases happen, or Earth seasons. So, I, I take globes, well, globes with me and stuff, and uh, I, I try and get them to reason out. So, why we don't have eclipses every month, things like that. So that is a fun workshop, and that is something which is included in their syllabus. So schools prefer that, right? As well. Um, I am setting workshops. Uh, uh, I I hope uh, to be setting a few more. Uh, I'm almost done setting the volcano workshop, where uh, and also Earth and Earth structure, where you know children will make Play-Doh, uh, different colored Play-Doh, and then uh, <laughs> they'll be you know then you have baking soda and vinegar and stuff like that to make the volcano. So that'll be fun as well. I'm working on a hydroelectric uh, project, so that 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 should work out hopefully in the next week. And once school is interested, so I mean, yeah. So these are the ones, but I have this long list of workshops that I need to set. Yeah, uh, I just keep running out of time. You know, it, it does take time to set up these workshops. Uh, even if you do have, you know, you you know what you have to do, but it takes a bit of time. So, but I have this long Excel file. With uh, you know, on clean technology, you have you have topics ranging from everything. Uh, so, yeah. But but right now, it's it's just these three, four workshops, four, five workshops. Okay. Now, I, I would love to screen share some of the pictures, but uh, if any of you are watching the Weekly Space Hangout on Friday, my computer crashes when I try and screen share. Um, because my office is in pieces right now, my computer packed away. But please go to uh, while we're talking, go to facebook.com/universe. Simplified India. Um, actually, maybe I'll put that in the lower third. <clears throat> well, actually, it's it's on your lower third. Universe simplified. Uh, so you can look at the pictures. It looks like the header picture are these bottle rockets that that your students made. Yes, recent. Very cool. And they decorated so well. The workshop. I know. Is fun. It's it's a lot of fun. So, about how many kids do you um how do you, how many kids do you get in your workshops, and how do you, um, I guess, recruit or get interest for the workshops? Okay, uh, so, so astronomy outreach is um, more or less uh, looked upon as something which requires funding, either mm -hmm. government funding or some external funding. But what I'm trying to do here is make a self-sustainable model. So I do charge a small amount for these workshops. And uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's really low. What I'm charging is very, very low. But I'm trying to go for volume. Mm -hmm. So I, um, I mean, so, so if something like $3 per child for the workshop. So if a school gives me 100 children for one day, then I drop the price to something like less than a dollar per child. Um, so I, 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 and schools prefer that, because then it's incredibly uh, low price, so it's, 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 it's not difficult for the parents to shell out something like a dollar. 
you know, for right. this workshop where the children are not getting this kind of education. So I, I cover up to 100 children per day. Um, uh, so we, so I, I don't increase the batch size because then I can't interact with the children directly, and I, I can't figure out whether they're understanding what I'm teaching them. Um, so it's it's usually um, one batch is about 30 to 35 children, mm -hmm. and uh, I take three back-to-back -back batches in a day. Okay. And uh, sometimes we do this within school hours. Sometimes it's um, it's as a hobby workshop uh, because schools do have science and nature clubs as well you know, maybe like 200 or 300 children and then the school gives me all of those children to have these workshops for. So then sometimes you do it over the weekend, sometimes it's during school hours. And um, um, uh, I, I'm just approaching these schools directly. Mm -hmm. uh, I, I'm, I'm doing a lot of, uh, I, I just line up at the school and I hope, because it's very difficult here to get an appointment with the teachers, they're so busy. Oh, so of course, I, yeah. I, the, the best thing is to line up at the school and I try and get an appointment with the principal. Um, some schools I do get through and I, I try and convince them why these workshops are important. Other times uh, I, um, I, I just leave the, the leaflets of describing the workshops at the school and I come off. And um, luckily a lot of schools are getting back. Mm -hmm. So that's, that's a really good thing. I mean yesterday I went to meet a school which is the most expensive school in Bombay and I was glad that they even considered doing hands-on based workshops because at least the international schools, they already have uh, hands-on based workshops. But um, uh, but still they find it difficult to get people who are into astronomy. So mm -hmm. um, I think that's, that's, you know, astronomy is something which is uh, unique over here. It's, it's not really covered. And there's so many of these children who are interested in astronomy, but they have not had anyone to ask their questions to. So, um, so it's, it's, it's good. It's, 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 it's luckily it's working out. The response I'm getting from schools is positive, so it's it's good. And it's it's as of now, I've not put in more money in the business than what I've earned from it. So um, it's working out great. In fact, you can easily make a comfortable living out of this particular model, and you get to do astronomy outreach, which is so awesome. That's amazing. It's so much fun. It's it's just incredible amounts of fun. I can't tell you. So what got you started in in doing this? What were you doing before, and what what gave you the idea to even start this? Um, I I um, was very passionate about astronomy as a child. Uh, like really, I used to sit long hours on the internet and read about galaxies and stuff. <laughs> and uh, you know, I was I was just born with it. I was, my first questions must have been about the universe and how white stars twinkle and whatever. So, um, but but while I was growing up, this passion sort of died out. Um, maybe because I was the only person who knew astron who was interested in astronomy. There's absolutely no one around me who knew astronomy, or you know, it was something which was just looked upon as a hobby. Um, the only uh, the only thing you think of is as a child, you think that you can become an astronaut. I, I didn't even yeah. know there was options to be an astrophysicist or an astrobiologist. I mean, so um, I. I I don't know why. Maybe this was the reason, but I don't know why the passion died out. I went on to do computer engineering and um, later an MBA. Um, and I was working with my um, family business. We manufacture textile machinery. And um, so, I, I, so I've been doing this for the past three years. And um, while I was working, um, you know, we, were, we, we make machinery. So we were purchasing these um, spare parts, uh, or we were making these machines. We were selling it to the customers, and at some point, I felt that what is the social impact of what I'm doing? Mm. Because if I'm going to do this for the rest of my life, then uh, you know it has to make more sense than this. And uh, I mean, the business is good; it's it's really good. It's it's just that I wanted something, uh, some social perspective to it. Sure. So I started thinking um, what it is that I could start, uh, which would have. Um, uh, I think it was more of a selfish reason. I wanted to do something for the rest of my life that I'm really passionate about. And I didn't want to do it just as a hobby. I mean, I, I could have. Um, so when I was working in the family business, I finally got more time on my hands to um, restart um, reading about astronomy and stuff. And the first book that I happened to pick up was Cosmos by Carl Sagan. Oh, and, oh wow. Uh, yeah. I think that book really changed me. <laughs> it, it sort of reignited my passion for astronomy uh, in an incredible way. And um, then I, that, I, I think that book must have got me started to think about what I could do to um, inspire other children or just get in touch with other children who already love astronomy. 
So I started thinking about it. I started now at this point I had no knowledge of astronomy at all. And my biggest point was how do I teach astronomy to others when you know I'm just starting it off as a hobby myself. So then I started listening to Astronomy Cast. That that podcast really helped me because Pamela is just awesome yeah. at explaining <laughs> to a lay person. So that was it. There was Universe Today Space section, which I read extensively. So I, I started immersing myself for a year. I think I was just all my free time. I was just studying astronomy. Wow. Um, yeah, and um, July of this year, I I so I was working in the family business and. And I was coming home, and I was studying astronomy. And uh, finally, <laughs> so finally, July of this year, I've left the family business completely, and I'm full time um, doing this because um, it's it's. I, I, I'm right now. It's um, I, I'm trying to do everything myself, but there is one more person, my friend Mira. She is helping me set the workshops, the the uh, project based workshops. So, um, but but. I mean, yeah, I ha I knew that I had to, you know, focus entirely on this, given 100%. If I had to um, try and set all the workshops, and then because I'm I'm setting the workshops, I'm doing sales, and I'm taking the workshops as well. So, um, yeah, now yeah, I'm full time. Yeah. yeah, I can't believe you handle 100 kids a day by yourself. That's impressive. <laughs> <laughs> but <laughs> like, and, and hands on. <laughs> How do you do that? Imagine doing that. I get one time. Um, but in batches, yes. And what? In that, yeah, okay. Uh, it, it helps to. Um, it, it helps that the topic is interesting. So if I'm talking to them about black holes, they are. They have so many questions. The, it's it's. I don't know whether I can even call it a workshop. It's more like them asking questions. It's it's. Uh, oh, uh, and um, yeah. So so the thing is that my workshops are single, time workshops. They're just like one time workshops, right? And um, I knew that if I have to make any impact, I have to continue to keep in touch with the kids. So mm -hmm. I have a um, Facebook group, um, and there are all these children onto that group. There are about 250 children by now, till now. And um, so, so from various schools, uh, whichever children, uh, so, so I realized that children do not check their email. Okay, yeah. that was that is an unfortunate thing because earlier I was trying to um, stay in touch with them through email and send them updates or stuff like that. But now um, I guess they log into Facebook more often. So I have a group over there. And we have such nice discussions over there, Nicole. I mean, uh, so there's this one child writing a novel on aliens. <gasps> there is, uh, you know, they'll ask about a million questions about black holes. They want to know everything about black holes. That's their favorite topic. Oh, about God. time travel, uh, you know about science fiction, and it's just so much fun just to interact with these children. And and you can, you know, after the workshops, and they are like, when are you coming back? And so many, you know, it's it's fun. And um, I so if the International Space Station is going overhead, I inform them, and then they go out and look at it. I tell them when Venus is visible about Jupiter and things like that. And I do. Oh, by the way, I do take the telescope to the schools as well. Okay. So I've got a six-inch telescope now, and I will be going to schools with it. So, so it's it's just a lot of fun, and um, yeah, I, I think uh, whoever does outreach, it's important to keep in touch with the children after that because, as a child, I had so many questions in my head. So um, I, I know that you know it's important that their questions have to be answered. So um, that is one thing which I I really focus on. That's so great. I think that's more important than the workshop itself because otherwise, you know, children nowadays children their their attention span is very low. Right. So one time workshop is not enough. You have to keep um, posting stuff about science and have these good discussions to get them excited about it. So, yeah, you kind of yeah. give them time to think about it as well before you talk to them about it next, and so that they oh they're going to come up with new questions or if they hear something on TV and they're like oh I want to ask about that. Um, they can oh come back my to you. God! But they they read so much on the internet and they oh, watch yeah. ancient aliens and stuff like that, which <laughs> they, <laughs> it's <laughs> sorry. A lot of my time goes into arguing with them or trying to make them reason out why aliens do not exist on Earth. <laughs> <laughs> A lot of my time goes fighting a good fight. 
show. We watch oh. all sorts of things and um, yeah. But but what I'm trying to do uh, through the group, so so these kids are really cute and they, you know, some of them will even ask and they'll ask questions about like does God exist or is evolution true and things like yeah. that. So what I'm trying, it's so awesome that they are asking these questions and uh, what I'm trying to do is try to get them to reason out the answers. So mm -hmm. like you, you think what the right answer is, you look at the proof of both sides and then you come to an answer. So things like that. So, um, I'm, but, but it's good. It's good that the children keep in touch with their children. Um, a couple of weeks back, this girl called me up. She is, oh, I think she's 11 or 10 and she's like, I want to be an astronaut. Oh. And um, she is really serious. I mean, I, I thought that, you know, I, I tried asking her, do you mean an astronomer or an astrophysicist? No, I want to be an astronaut. So it's so awesome. And she's like, uh, you know, I'm the, I'm, uh, no one else in her family thinks this way, so are you going to help me become an astronaut? So I was like, uh, yeah, yeah, so we'll, we'll, we'll try and make an astronaut out of you. So, and, and there are a lot of these children who are, so there's one child who uh, said, I want to be a planetary scientist. And you'll be amazed at the kind of knowledge he has. Wow. He is in the ninth grade. He knows everything about Jupiter's core and internal structure. And it's just amazing. I was, I was quite amazed. And um, so there are, there are all these, there are these parents calling me up. And they're like, our child wants to become an astronomer. What telescope do we buy? Or how do we go about it? Yeah. So it's, it's great. It's, it's, the, uh, it's, it's nice. It's very fulfilling. It sounds like you're going to need more, more, more help <laughs> with your business, keeping yes. up with all, all this yes. correspondence. <laughs> yes, I know. Yeah, I. But there now, are... do you find it? It's better for for the older children using Facebook um, to keep in touch. Is there like an age below which you don't get them on Facebook? I, I don't get them. I don't get the younger ones at all. Yeah. I I get them from seventh grade onwards. And, okay. Uh, but what I, I, I make it a point to uh, leave my contact details with them. Like right, they all come right. after the workshop and they take my contact details and I've made it very clear that you can just call me any time of the, even in the night or any time just email me whatever questions you have. And they do that. The good thing is that they do that. So there are a lot of children who are not on Facebook but still they are getting in touch with me. Like this girl who wants to become an astronaut, mm -hmm. she has no access to internet. Um, so yeah. I'm, I'm sort of in a fix, how do I even um, coach her, but but yeah, the good thing is that she keeps in touch with me every few days, she will ping in to check on how I am doing. Uh, oh my gosh. <laughs> they're very cute. Uh, but uh, yes, they, they they keep in touch, they ask questions and uh, it, it's good. So even if I can get few of these children, at least the ones who are already interested in science, Mm -hmm. uh, I think it's it's good, it's good enough, and there are a lot of children who have never thought about astronomy. You know, they they never realize, they never ask questions like, what are the other stars? So when I talk to them about all these things and doing the workshop, they are like, wow. Uh, I mean, they they never realize that the elements in their body where they've come from, and you know, just the fact that they understand all this, and then they start asking me questions after the workshop. So these are children who have never even thought about all these things. Yeah. So that is good because. I mean, they were not getting, going to get this information from um, the normal education curriculum. Right. I, I hope at some point astronomy is incorporated, but uh, I think till then uh, we, we, the amateur astronomers need to maybe start doing something like this. Uh, yeah. yeah. So we actually have, uh, we just got a comment, that's awesome, from Richard Drum, who is an amateur astronomer, I used to work with in Virginia. Um, he used to come out to the schools, um, so I think uh, Fraser probably thought of getting us in contact because I used to do this kind of work with third, fourth, and fifth graders um, in okay. in Virginia. Um, okay. So Richard Drum was one of the amateur astronomers who used to who came out and brought his telescopes and let the let the kids look through his telescopes and just made it a, an amazing fun That's time. Awesome. Um, yes, I, I love the hands-on stuff because that that really oh. gets kids' attention, and I'm really glad to hear they're asking questions because that's like that's the best thing you can teach a kid about science right is just to keep right. asking questions and and finding those answers yes so. I mean that that's the whole thing because I, I don't want children to study from to memorize something because they're not going to understand anything anyway so I try mm -hmm. to drill that into them that just just reason out whether it's the exam point of view or anything else in life just reason out things for yourself so um, yeah Oh, by the way, um, I, I last year, so when I was trying to set up this uh, whole uh, thing, I wanted to um, set up 
try try and work with radio telescopes as well. <laughs> so uh, yeah, but but I, I have to get working on it again. Yeah. Then, well, then I would like to take that to schools as well to get children to see how radio telescopes can be used to maybe read the sun. Uh, yeah. Have you heard of the itty bitty radio telescope? I know. I that that is the one. That's the yes. one. Okay. Yeah. yeah. I have so, a bunch of dishes in my garage that I keep meaning yeah. to turn into itty bitties. I just haven't had the time or money to get the rest of the components. <laughs> um, but we we brought uh, one of our professors at Virginia, uh, Ed Murphy, made one and uh, brought it out to the and we bring it to the school because um, you can not only point it at the sun, but you, if they have you know if you have a cell phone with you, you can turn the cell phone on in front of it and all kinds that's, of fun stuff like that. That's really cool. Yeah. So, yeah. Yeah. I I have all these. Projects in my head right now, <laughs> which I would like to start taking to schools or at least high school students. So, and one of the big like, um, low frequency radio telescopes is the giant meter wave radio telescope, the GMRT. I've, I've is, gone there. I've you've been, been there. there? Oh, cool! Yes. It's awesome. It's I've it's never lovely. been. <laughs> no. Okay. <laughs> but but no, uh, that's really a great tie. That's a great tie into that lesson. Yes. Yes. Very cool. Very cool. Um, I also see that there is a another favorite substance of mine. I see uh, soap bubbles and dry ice. What were you doing with the uh, dry oh, ice? I was having fun. <laughs> I was purely having fun with that. Um, actually, I I'm trying to set a workshop which is uh, just crazy chemistry stuff. Mm -hmm. Maybe uh, uh, just to get them excited. Uh, but but I'm not sure because the thing is that my workshops are not demo based. I get the kids. Um, I, I get them to work with stuff. So I'm not sure if I should use dry ice because um, I mean I'm just trying to figure it out. Right. But yeah. Uh, but yeah, I was watching all these um, science experiment stuff on the internet. I was having. I just got some dry ice and I was trying to have some fun with it. Um, but but yes, I, I I hope to do that. Um, some chemistry base, and then I want another workshop, just normal physics stuff, mm -hmm. but just like you know, like three four small experiments in one workshop. Yeah. Something that they can do and get them excited about. So, dry ice but, is awesome. You just need you need a few volunteers to help you supervise. <laughs> yeah. You know, to make sure that they don't do anything unsafe. But you know, getting kids yeah. to play with dry ice with proper gloves is fine. But you have to watch them closely, and, and it's yeah. really fun. And these and you have, you have to put the fear. You have to put the fear of it of, <laughs> of burning themselves in them. Like if you if they fear it, they'll respect it. <laughs> yeah, I was just you know like thinking to myself, should I or should I not? Because sometimes, um, so it's a batch of 30, 35 mischievous mm -hmm. kids, and I don't always have teachers. Sometimes it's just me handing these kids. Oh, oh so, my gosh, that's a lot. So I, I was just wondering whether I should go ahead. Like right now, I I think I'll just like play it safe. Um, yeah. Maybe and try do one do one big demo in front of the room and yeah and, yeah. yeah. Maybe that, maybe that. But it was so much fun. I, I get to have all the fun in the name of science, so was, dry ice was fun. Science dry ice is fantastic for that. I um my favorite thing is to make a comet out of dry ice. Uh, and again, I you can really only do that with kids if you had like if okay. So we we had maybe thirty kids and four to five volunteers. Okay. Um, for a group of thirty kids, so that we watched them <laughs> when they had the dry ice, and they had big poofy gloves on. Um, because, yeah. I know I bought those goofy gloves. It's these real oversized ones. Yeah, yeah. Where do you get ideas for your for your workshops and activities? Um. So um, there are these NASA websites. Uh, mm -hmm. There are a lot of. Um, Stuff on YouTube. If you just Google science experiments, there's a lot of stuff there. But I think yes, it's it's mainly um, uh, the NASA websites, the NASA wavelength. There's mm -hmm. after school universe. There's, there's mm -hmm. hands on universe. There's a mm -hmm. nice PDF file which is available for uh, educators out there, and uh, they have a lot of they have this. It's, it's one file where they have some ten different things which you can do to teach astronomy to children. Um, that that find is good. It's I think hands on universe something like that. Hand, uh, yeah, I hands on universe. It's one of our partners. Yeah. Yes. So I, I got a lot of ideas from there. Um, eclipsing. Oh, there is this uh, really good website. STEM resources um, or STEM center. Sorry, it's I think a UK based website. STEM okay. center. It's excellent for educators. It's brilliant. 
Ooh, I uh, that one this workshop, I set it from there. Um, uh, they have, I, I, I guess what they do on that website is they have um, other educators all over the world, they have shared their resources over there. And um, it's it's very well categorized, so you can go to whichever topic you want, and you can see what other people have posted, what other people, um, what activities they are doing, and uh, they have full PDF, they have full resource files, and it's free of cost. You just need a login ID and password. It's excellent. I I, I think that's my main resource. Is this uh, National there. STEM Center yes. dot org dot UK? Right. It is. Okay. Cool. So there there's that one. National STEM Center dot u uh, dot org dot UK. NASA wavelength. That's a resource we've um, kept, we've used a lot here. Uh, hands Global Hands On Universe is an, is a great yes. project. Um, there's a yes. new one launching. I don't know if you've heard of the IAU, the International Astronomical Union, is also starting yes. up um, a an astronomy outreach resources uh, website. Uh, so I, I there's something a bunch of us had talked about. You know, well, we need to collect all the astronomy resources in one place, but I think the IAU is 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 doing that right now. Is that the Galileo program that you're talking about? The what? The Galileo teaching program? I have, no, 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 no. This is an this is a different one. I think I mean it is probably affiliated with the Galileo teachers too, but it's the IAU. I'm gonna have to find the website. I think Lena is gonna yell at me that I don't remember it off the top of my head. Um, but yeah, IAU Astro. I'll I'll, I'll Google it. Yeah, it, it's a fairly new site, which is why I can't I can't remember exactly which one it is. If somebody yell at me in the comments, if you um, if you <laughs> come up with it, uh, we have a comment from Eyes on the Sky. The itty bitty radio telescope doesn't look hard to make. Just a matter of getting a signal meter once one has a dish right. Uh, yes, although the signal meter that they recommend is no longer being made apparently. Um, but I, I think if you just get one of those um, signal meters that you use to peek up your... I don't have... I've never had satellite TV. But if you get a meter that you use to peek up your satellite dish on the satellite, um, that's really all you need. And it makes a little whiny sound when it <laughs> sees the signal. Um, I need so. to get working on that. Yeah, and and uh, yeah, I just um, found people. A lot of people uh, here were just giving away their old satellite dishes for free. So that was that was that part was easy. Okay. I don't, I don't know if you guys have have a, a, a Craigslist. We do, we do. I love to go around searching for. Go to Craigslist. Go to Craigslist, or or if you use Free Cycle, those are yeah. That's where I found free dishes. That's <laughs> you can make little radio telescopes in your backyard. Oh, so do you have a, um, you said you have a lot of ideas, but do you have a favorite uh, workshop that you've done so far? Um, the water rocket, by, by until now, from whatever workshops we have set, water rocket is just, it's, it's really nice. Because, yeah. um, I mean, it, it's, it's not being done here in India at all, though okay. it's a simple thing. And uh, the kids enjoy making the water rockets themselves, and uh, I love to watch them decorate everything. They'll come up with, so I, I tell them to give names to their teams, and um, <laughs> they come up with these crazy names, and then they'll make a logo for it, and you know, it's, it's just fun, the whole thing, and then the launching yeah. bit is fun as well. So usually schools do have a large playground, and uh, we go out there the next day and we launch it, and these kids are all wet. Um, and I mean, they just they just won't stop launching it. You know, it's like one hour, two hours. Sometimes it's more than that, but they just continuously keep launching the rockets. Um, it's it's good. I I love that workshop. <laughs> of course, the That's astronomy awesome. one is a lot better because um, what kind of what kind of astronomy thing? You said you cover black holes. How do you do black holes with them? No. So the thing is that um, I I really want to have the entire workshop also hands on not only have them draw stuff like draw black mm -hmm. holes or stuff like that but i am what i'm fa the the problem that i'm facing right now is i give 2 hours for the astronomy workshop which includes the drawing bit uh, the craft items bit and uh, mm -hmm. I, I just run out of time uh, because they are asking so many questions and i try to pack a lot of stuff so i i want to cover comets i want to cover meteors because um, they, they don't know what, what are meteors, you know, it's like just shooting stars and you think that yep. stars fall off. But I, I want to, um, so there's so much of stuff that I want to pack into that one workshop because it's a single workshop and I don't right. know when I'll go to that school again. So, um, yeah, so I'm not, I mean, I have, I, I know all the stuff that I could do. If I want to teach them black holes, you know, we could have this balloon and wrapped up in an aluminum foil and then burst it and show a supernova and then start crunching it and things like that. 
So I know what all can be done, but I, I just really run out of time, even to show the expansion yeah. of the universe. So, um, so I, I try and post videos and links later on after the workshop on the Facebook group, uh, where I explain it to them in more detail, and um, you know where there are these good animated videos or um, articles which would explain the concept further. But um, yeah, I, I'm, I'm, I, I hope I could split the astronomy workshop into the solar system and the, uh, you know, the higher level workshop, and then maybe I could start having them work uh, and understand how it's done. <laughs> yeah, that, no, that makes sense. That makes sense. Right now, I'm just trying to pack in more stuff in yeah. one workshop. So, yeah. Um, what kind of feedback do you get um, from students and maybe from school administrators as well uh, after you do these workshops? Um, so, I went to the school recently and uh, they, they like the workshop, so they have asked me to teach 100 teachers now. Oh my gosh. It's really awesome. Uh, but, but no, the general feedback that I've received is positive. It's very positive. So the children have already said that whenever you set newer workshops, you have to come back. And uh, I mean, they, they keep asking me that. And it's, it's nice that uh, they enjoyed the workshop. I, I think what helps is uh, the topic itself is very interesting. Yes. Uh, that's, that's the most, um, you know, it's the most advantageous thing for me. So uh, it, 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 it looks good right now. Uh, the schools, uh, I've built a good rapport with schools that I've already been to. And uh, yeah, um, so, so yeah, I mean, whenever I set new workshops, I will be informing them. And hopefully, I'll be doing a repeat workshop at all the schools. So that way, I get to see the children again as well and interact more with them. Uh, I've already done repeat workshops. The Water Rocket, we kept it for the seventh grade children at one school. Um, sorry, we started with the ninth grade children, mm -hmm. and um, so after a few months, they um, asked me to keep it for the eighth and the seventh grade children as well. So it was a repeat workshop there. Um, so yeah, the, the response is good. I'm, I'm glad that the teachers are uh, taking uh, taking to the concept because mm -hmm. uh, I, I think teachers want to teach uh, using hands-on um, activities. It's just that. They do not have the resources, or they just plainly run out of time. So they like that mm -hmm. someone from out can come and offer these low-cost workshops, and uh, you know, do that for them. So it's 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 sort of working out. It's you know, uh, the thing is that if you can work here, then this model can work anywhere. Because for me, the most important thing is keeping the workshop price as low as possible. So mm -hmm. when I have to design a workshop, I can't really just pick workshops off the shelf. I need to see how I can use the children themselves as props. So that I mean, there's no material. <laughs> yeah. So if I have to teach them about the Earth, Sun, and the Moon movement, I make them get up, and I yep. have one become the Sun, one become the Earth, and the Moon, and I have them go around each other. Uh, it involves them, and it reduces the cost. Um, so um, even so, so things like using reusable models. So in the Eclipse workshop, that's something which I completely reuse. Right? It's just one set. I have these eight or ten sets of torches and earth and moon and stuff and I reuse that every time so my cost goes down so I need to set workshops like this it's, oh there's this um, a workshop which I intend to set on astrobiology that's my favorite subject I, I'm crazy about astrobiology it's it's so awesome so I want them to understand how life originated on earth and um, what we are doing now to look out for other planets and stuff so I'm trying. So when I'm designing these workshops, I have to keep in mind on what reusable models I can use. So I have to think on those lines. So, mm -hmm. so I mean, I hope that you know, once these workshops are set and I can put up these resources somewhere, maybe on some the website, uh, then these can be just picked and used in other countries, at least in other developing countries where um, cost is an issue. Mm -hmm. So, um, so I mean, yeah. So I have to keep because it's really price sensitive. The market here is really price sensitive. You know, that's so. great, and and that's I mean that's great anywhere. I mean they said the club that we had, that they have in Virginia, they're still running in Virginia. They they would love these uh, activities because and they've also been developing activities and want to put them out there. So sharing is good. <laughs> sharing all the ideas. I I, I hope I, I I'm sending all these workshops and then I will be putting up all the resources on the website Very cool. so that other educators can just uh, they don't need to spend so much time in just setting these workshops. Mm -hmm. uh, because these will be uh, as low cost as it gets. Uh, that's my major challenge right now. To well, it looks like you're using a lot of like simple materials, like the bottle rockets, like you know, Very plastic simple. bottles, construction paper. Very simple. 
yeah. and things which are easily available because these children go back and then I try and get them to make the water rockets themselves because it's mm -hmm. one thing when I'm telling them how to make it but I want them to try and try it out themselves but all of this stuff is so easily available in any hardware store so mm -hmm. I have posted the entire material that they would need uh, I've posted videos on how to make the rocket not my videos but there are these fantastic videos on YouTube on how to make the launcher uh, so I've put it all up there for the children and um, some of them they go and they make the water rocket themselves so that's that's great but uh, yeah, I I I um, I hope to put up the details for the educators as well. Very One cool. A little bit more set. So, uh, Richard Drum uh, is wondering: Have you uh, brought a telescope out with a solar filter in the daytime um, to have them look at the sun? No, I've not cost. done that. It's 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 something that I I, I should do. Um, yeah, I have it on my mind. I've not done that yet. That's a great idea. Okay. Um, yeah, that's a great idea. I should do that. Yeah, if you have, if if you, if you can get access to a solar filter or, or one of those little coronascopes, um, so that they can view the sun safely. <laughs> I, I won't pick up a nice filter uh, because children will be looking through it. Um, so yeah, I I will be doing that in the glass oh, cool. one, not the not the paper one. Do you tend to visit schools that um, they have pretty dark nighttime skies, or is it uh, usually in an urban area where there's a lot of light pollution? Like, have they looked up at the sky a lot? Yeah. So all these schools are in the heart of Bombay. Okay. And unfortunately, no, we do not have good skies. But um, I, I do take binoculars as well, and you can easily see Orion. You can see Orion, mm -hmm. and uh, I mean, so then if I'm I'm showing through the telescope, then the moon is something which they love. And you know the very fact that those craters on the moon are billions of years old, it, it gets them excited. Uh, also, Jupiter and Venus. I mean, you can show these objects easily. Right. Uh, the sky is not that clear, which is I, which is why uh, when I, I mean, a lot of children have never even looked up at the night sky and like given it a thought as to what the stars are. Uh, that's sad. <laughs> but, uh, yeah, when you uh, live in a city, yeah. <laughs> Uh, so and, and the the sad thing is that we have the monsoon season here from June to until October November and these these months are completely blacked out. I just cannot take the telescope out. So now that uh, you know it's December, so now is when I'm starting to take the telescope again to schools. Uh, but those five months are just like just the telescope is just kept in the cupboard. But um, yeah, you know the, we, we do not do not have very dark skies. Yeah, unfortunately. But the That's radio it. telescope, it wouldn't matter. Granted, you can yeah. only see the sun, but <laughs> <laughs> I, you know, that I, I don't know. It's it's just fascinating. The radio telescope concept is just fascinating. That's probably one of the first things that I started working on. And then it was I don't know why it wasn't really working out. Then I thought, let me start setting these other easier workshops. Yeah. And then I'll get back to the radio telescope. But now I'm working on the hydroelectric thing. Uh, there is someone here who is going to help me with the windmill thing. He is oh. a specialist in windmills, but even with how to design the fins and stuff. Um, then Very cool. Got yeah. a solar panel. I would love children to make a toy out of solar panel. So I have all these things now on the list. Um, uh, I, I I hope to get around to the radio telescope soon uh, and get that done here. There is one astronomer here in Bombay, and uh, I, I will be working with him on the radio telescope thing. So. It's it's you know it's amazing that Very I get cool. stuff from other people. Uh, I don't know how much I would have been able to set. My friend Mira, she helps me so much. It's it's really nice. Uh, she comes over and just just yes, just a couple of days back she was here and we were trying to uh, you know magnets and copper coils and we were trying to figure out stuff. So it's it's good fun. Yeah, it's Magnet good. Magnets are the best. <laughs> <laughs> But it's nice that I'm getting so much help from other people in uh, setting this whole thing up. It, it's it's nice. That's good. That's good. If you if okay, so here I don't know if you have you ever seen the little plastic beads that are sensitive to ultraviolet light. No. Is that okay? So my, I I love the invisible light stuff too, and a, and a nice cheap demo for doing um, teaching them about the different types of light there are these little plastic beads that are sensitive to ultraviolet light they're just called UV beads um, okay. and you can uh, use those to show them when it's out in the sunlight or if you get like a little UV flashlight I have one somewhere 
Um, and uh, you, you shine it on. It, it, they, the beads change color, so they change color in the sunlight or in ultraviolet light. Um, that's a, a, a fairly cheap demo of demonstrating, like indoors, normal, you know, normal lighting is just the optical light. You go outside, you see this ultraviolet light. Nice. So and, I, I should probably yeah, see that. Workshops which will get children thinking about stuff like that. Yeah. yeah I mean, this is one of the easiest ways to get them thinking about how there are different kinds of light. So yeah. Yeah. It's nice Find those these UV beads from somewhere. So other than so, so you you're really excited about the radio telescope. One of the is there are there any others in the works that you're particularly excited about? I really want the solar thing to work out. I mean, I had made a solar powered toy, and it's uh -huh. just so much fun to look at it. You know, it will just start racing the minute you put it in the sun. Um. Then, oh, I. I have such a long list. I don't even know what I'll have put in there. <laughs> the list is so long, and I just keep adding projects onto it. Uh, but there are. But, uh, but I'm going to focus a lot on these. Uh, the the real, see what happens with even the water rocket. I can't offer them for like three dollars a child, because I have material costs. So that's something like six dollars or seven dollars a child. Right. Um, so I right now I'm trying. See, I'm going to a lot of schools where. Uh, so a lot of schools are giving me positive feedback, but there are a lot of schools out there for whom even that one dollar is expensive. Um, and uh, so, so maybe I will. Uh, I I'm trying to like in parallel. So once I have these solar things, these project-based ideas set, but I want all these other topics as well, which like on astrobiology or on evolution, things like that, uh, on um, cell structure, on uh, light. Uh, there is electricity. There is magnetism. So these are also topics which children are studying for their exams, and uh, I don't know how much they understand. Uh, but if you know, if I can have these workshops, it will get them excited about science, and at the same time, it will help them understand the concepts better. So um, yeah, I, th I think these these are the ones which are on my immediate list: light, electricity, uh, magnetism, and stuff like that. They are on my on the immediate list, which I hope to set by in June. Uh, within the next six months. The, the, the only thing is that, yeah, I, I when the schools are on, so then there's um, sales and the workshops bit as well. So, um, yeah, I need more time. <laughs> I need the days to be longer, basically. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> oh, if only. <laughs> How often do you do these workshops? Sorry? How often do you do workshops? In general, I generally uh, end up having a workshop a week on an average. Okay. Uh, but uh, but I'm talking to these schools. Um, so yesterday I spoke to one school, and uh, they are looking for these workshops for all of their children from the fifth to the ninth grade. Wow. And uh, so I have also fixed up another school where they are. We have set work. We have set dates for workshops for 450 children. Uh, till now, I've taught about a thousand children. Uh, Across various schools since July. Uh, now the thing, what happens is sometimes you 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 have a lot of vacations over here in India. We have uh, a lot of festivals, and so now again schools are breaking for uh, the Christmas vacation. Mm -hmm. So then I miss out on these days, you know, because during vacations we don't have any workshops. Right. So those months, yeah, like fewer workshops. But then they have exams and they have sports days, annual days. So there are a lot of other activities also which are going on at schools. But but um, but yeah. So Jan and Feb, I think, should be good. Like I have these uh, schools who are trying. Uh, we are we are trying to set workshops for the entire from the fifth to the ninth grade, all the children. Mm -hmm. um, so then that should that then that's like a continuous seven days of nonstop hundred children per day. Uh, it's something like that. So so that that should be good. That should be good. Very cool. So it it depends on from month to month how it goes. So this month has been a little slow. Uh, October was excellent. October, I did a lot of workshops. Um, I don't know how because there were exams during October, but still, we ended up doing a lot of workshops. Wow. That is yeah. November. There was vacation again, so <laughs> 20 days off. November was just gone. But um, yeah, Jan and Feb should be good. So, so we are getting a whole bunch of recommendations. Uh, for signal meters for the itty bitty radio telescope, which I can share with you after. <laughs> Thank you so much. Thanks, everyone. <laughs> <laughs> you guys rock. Um, yeah, I I don't know. I know that they 
there are some that come really cheap, but I don't know. Again, I don't I don't know enough about these particular signal meters if they're not um, how sensitive it has to be uh, in order to actually to to pick up what you want it to pick up. But you know, if I get some and play with them, I can give you feedback. <laughs> Because I, I have four, four of these dishes in my garage, so I may just start playing with these and let you know. <laughs> I just want something which will read the sun. Uh, yeah, yeah. That's probably, yeah, that's all you're going to get. Right. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> but that alone is pretty cool. So so thank you, uh, who's, who's been sending these? Eyes on the Sky and uh, Bill Levin. So thank you um, for recommending that. And uh, Richard Drum is also recommending for the solar telescope a Bader solar film, solar film, B A A D E R. Uh, he says it's fairly cheap and easy to set up. So okay, I'll, I'll um, do that then. I'll do that. Guess look into that. So yeah, I, I trust Richard. He's, he's, yes. good, he's a good astronomer. <laughs> Thanks, Richard. Yeah. Um. So we are coming up almost on an hour. Um. I want to ask our audience to send in any last questions or comments. Like I said, I will be looking at these signal meters <laughs> um, <laughs> afterwards. I the other big thing is is time. I don't yeah I don't have I haven't figured out a way to to uh, to to uh, get someone to <laughs> pay for these. We tried to we tried to set up a workshop where uh, kids would be building radio telescopes, but that one fell through unfortunately. So we're still working on that. Um, but we're going to look at these signal meters. Um, I want to ask you guys to send in any last questions or comments for Hannah. Um, I'm going to do some quick announcements, and then Hannah, I want to end the show with uh, a comment from you. But first, I'm going to. Go over the schedule. Today is Wednesday night, so tomorrow is Thursday. I don't think there's a hangout. Friday. <laughs> Friday is the weekly space hangout uh, at Newton Pacific. So Fraser Kane hosts a bunch of us as we go over the top stories in astronomy and space from the last week. Um, I'm not sure if he'll be around. We are literally in the middle of the big office move that we've been talking about for a while now. Um, but Fraser will definitely be doing the Friday hangout at Newton Pacific. Um, Sunday night is the virtual star party. I think they're starting that at 6 p.m. Pacific now, uh, Sunday night. So if you guys want to check out some astronomical objects of your own uh, through the amateur telescopes uh, that they have set up in the Hangout, it is super fun. Um, so check that out on Sunday. Monday is the live recording of Astronomy Cast. Hopefully Pamela will be settled in her new office by Monday. We're gonna we're gonna work to get all our stuff set up this week, so she'll be uh, although she usually broadcasts from home anyway. But uh, so Pamela Gay and Fraser Kane will be uh, doing a live episode of Astronomy Cast on Monday at noon Pacific. Um, and then we're, our learning space is actually going to take a hiatus for the next two weeks because next Wednesday is Christmas Day, and the day uh, week after that is New Year's Day. So I think we're gonna go on hiatus. I am possibly going to do a few pre-recorded videos of wintery science experiments, which I'll put up in the meantime, but our next show won't be until January 8th on Wednesday, and it'll be um, something about the American Astronomical Society meeting that I'll be at that week in uh, Washington, D.C., so hopefully I'll get some of my fellow astronomy ambassadors to talk about our workshop. Um, so January 8th will be the next learning space. Um, so, oh, we have a hello from Michael Jobin. Yay! Um, all right, so Hannah, I want to maybe uh, end with you. Do um, you have any advice for someone with the same kind of passion that you have for astronomy outreach, um, how to get started doing something like this? So, um, yeah, I, see, when I was starting out, the main, um, my, my, the main issue that I was thinking that I am not from a pure astronomy background. Uh, so I was wondering how I would end up doing outreach and teaching children astronomy, but it's really not that difficult. If you um, have a fair enough knowledge, which you can get from, you know, listening to podcasts or there are some really good sources, and if you, uh, it, it's really not difficult to teach these children or try and get them excited about astronomy. So if you are thinking of doing something like that, uh, I mean, you could probably just get in touch. Or I mean, it, it's actually just so simple, you know, just to set a simple telescope. You can just start going to the local schools in your area. And uh, and they will they will uh, give you a positive response if you just go and talk to the science teachers there, and just tell them that you know you would like to keep an astronomy workshop. Just go and talk to the children about stuff, uh, uh, get them excited, and then maybe have them draw something, uh, you know, uh, about the solar system and things like that. Just so that it's a fun thing, fun activity for them. 
and uh, so if you are doing that but please uh, I, I hope you all also keep in touch with the children after the workshops I think that's yes. a more important part of astronomy outreach keep in touch with the kids and um, uh, yeah I, 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 it's really really very very simple if, if you know if I can do it any anyone can do it because um, I had no astronomy knowledge a couple of years back uh, but it's really simple so just go ahead and just go yeah that's excellent. Thank you so much. This was so inspiring and so awesome. Um, and and let's keep in touch because we uh, sure. we can get these itty bitty telescopes working. <laughs> yeah, we have to. And share share resources. Thanks for getting me on the show. Thanks. Thanks so much. I'm so glad Fraser got us in touch. <laughs> All right, thanks for watching, everybody. Uh, so that's it for this week's Learning Space. Hope to see you on Friday. Uh, if not, I will see you soon. Thanks. Bye.